Well, let's start with the dialogue between both you. Um, I have um, a question from each of you. The first for Yangel. Um, what do you think about the BRT systems, the bus uh, tran rapid transit uh, system as in Curitiba? Uh, do you think uh, are uh, compatible with the human scale? And in general, what do you think about the, this strategic approach uh, and understanding the plan as a project of uh, projects? No? And the projects inside the project. Well, um, I really, <coughs> I have seen Curitiba several times and I much admire this plan and this strategy of having the whole city built around a public transportation system rather than just let it spread as many other cities have done. And I uh, certainly think that that this kind of transportation system, this kind of planning, it goes very well with my ideas of, of uh, putting people first. <laughs> um, one of the things I tried to mention was that I think it's very important that we find ways of solving the problems of cities in a cheap uh, and sustainable way so it's not about buying a number of smart things here and there, but about finding simple solutions. <laughs> I think that the metro on rubber wheels, which is actually now used all over the world, in, in also in Los Angeles and other places, but certainly many places in the developing country, is a very fine concept of offering mobility to people who have no access to car, and also who could prevent mm -hmm. trying to get a car and use their money for something better. So I think that's a mm -hmm. ve very obvious system. I mentioned myself that, that um, a good public realm and a good public transportation mm -hmm. system, they are brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. um, and they are necessary, both of them, to have efficient mm -hmm. uh, competition to the individual mm -hmm. car which everybody will try to own in the other situation. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> well. But I think there was something quite interesting. Um, in, in the course of your talk, because first you talked about big strategies for Curitiba, how to organize the growth of Curitiba, how to make public transportation, the backbone of the whole planning. And then, in the end, you talked about uh, acupuncture. And so, one thing was about sort of the big vision, and the other thing was about plugging little things in. And I think that, of course, both things are mm -hmm. important. I was mentioning uh, these uh, things from Copenhagen and I very much believe in strategies that we shall ask where would we like this city to be, be 10 years from now or 20 years from now and how can we move towards this goal um, that would be one strategy of, of a wider um, implication and the other strategy would be to make nicer things for the everyday life. I showed a little waste paper box which was tilted so it was better for the cyclist. S something that's a very small acupuncture but where the people will feel that there is some architects there who have my comfort in mind do yeah. these things. So mm -hmm. from up, down and from mm -hmm. up. small things up. Every time Every opportunity, if it's big, if it's small, has to be done, my point of view, very fast. For instance, acup acupuncture is not to uh, is not to replace the planning system. 
is to help, mm -hmm. to help uh, or to start to test uh, with a good example. So we started our public transport in 1974 with 50,000 passengers, one line. And it was, and now we are transporting 2,600,000. And London is transporting 3 million. The cost, 100 times less per kilometer. It's, it's good to start. I'm, I'm, I'm old. I, I don't have time to wait for a start. <laughs> I, I love to work with people. For instance, in my team, journalists. Well, we have many of them because they are used to finish their work very fast the next day. Mm -hmm. Or artists, they have uh, sensibility. They have a special skin and they can feel society earlier. Mm -hmm. So if I can if I can have people that they feel society earlier, why should I work with people that they, they know society after? So, and I had, for instance, incredible people. For instance, a landscape architect from Japan so he started as a gardener in Curitiba. And I realized that he could do well the, his job. And after a few months, I invited him to be the director of public parks. And after the secretary of environment, he was able to finish a park in one month. And so it's very famous now in Japan because many homage to due to his work. Incredible person. Uh, <laughs> very, he, he can work with joy. So we, I would like to invite people on having the joy to make it happen. Uh, the joy of making it happen. Yes, it's possible. You can do it. I've, I finished one time a speech in the U.S. with uh, rap. So the rap was, it's possible, it's possible. You can do it, you can do it. Obama. You use less your car. Mm -hmm. uh, make this transition. Avoid carbon emission. It's possible, it's possible. <laughs> Separate your garbage. <laughs> organic, organic. Uh, it's possible, it's possible. Live closer to work or bring work closer to home. It's possible, it's possible. Mm -hmm. You can do it now. So, so I'm having fun. Uh, after being a mayor and a governor, I decided to I spend my life with fun. So, and we're working, singing, cooking all the time. And it's incredible. I had the chance to have 
great people working with me. I am so, uh, I'm so grateful to these professionals that they worked with me. Some of them, they they retired or they no longer exist. They passed away. But I'll never forget the joy what makes them to work and the proud of having done uh, there's a few a challenge. So now you're talking about the joy of life yes. and the joy of working and I would add also the joy of working as an architect yes. because I think that both of us have experienced that with our education we have been that there has been a possibility to do a lot of good things for many people who needed good things to be done I think that's fantastic and also it's a privilege to be as old as we are that we are able to see things happen and things being fulfilled mm -hmm. and see the results of these various um, interventions. I, um, we have earlier in this conference we've discussed if there's reason to be optimistic or pessimistic and I would and I think you also, but we could ask you about it. But I'm definitely an optimist. I've seen so many things in cities, admittedly in the, the Western or, or industrialized part of the world, being done so much better and the life of the people there being so much improved that I think that everything is possible. And I think that it's important that we find very simple things to do and we go for the essentials. I pointed yeah. to Homo sapiens and the, our abilities to move and our abilities to use our senses, our love for other people as some very important drivers which we can concentrate on making this joyful for many people. I, I, you talked about uh, something quick, and I have. Um, I was mentioned in Copenhagen. They have worked for 55 years, many small steps, mm -hmm. but it's all the time been better city. And um, if if the direction is good, um, and they still do, that's fine. They, they could do more in 50 years than you can in five. I've also seen in New York where they used 10 years and did quite a bit and in Moscow where they used five years to do more than they've done in New York but also they have very efficient democracy in Russia um, which is we've also talked about deficient, efficient democracy and a, a number of other types of democracy but, but it, it's been f fantastic to see these various speeds which cities are able to change their face and make it better for the people and I believe both in the slow approach in some places and in the fast approach in other places or in small interventions which will make the life better uh, for some people somewhere. <laughs> We've all seen <laughs> it happening. That's yeah, wonderful. Yes. Um, last question before giving the, 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 the word to the, to the, to the people. Um, you were talking in, in the lunch uh, about the influencers. Um, I think you are great influencers. Uh, you were talking about the, you are shortlist, shortlisted in, in the ranking of uh, the most uh, important influencers in uh, thinking uh, about city and thinking about uh, plans and, and projects on the city. What do you think about that? <laughs> well. And what do you think about the, the first Lady in the in the list. Jane Jacobs. Jane Jacobs. 
to have to I would like to know um, that this reference could bring to some city some help. Uh, it's good to have a good reference. I'm not saying I never said that Curitiba is an example. It's a reference of, I would say, simplicity and imperfection. Sometimes most of the people that they are working in the planning of a city, they want to have all the answers. It's not possible. All you have is to start. Uh, you cannot have all the answers. Mm -hmm. Yes, for times of uncertainty. Yeah. Yes. I was trying to make the point um, in my presentation about the future of the cities that maybe the future actually started with Jane Jacob introducing the humanistic, the people-oriented uh, strategy for planning, the people-oriented uh, uh, way of going about things. And then I started, I tried to, to elaborate and say that many, quite a few cities are along this track now. And that, I hope that the, few, the humanistic approach to city planning will actually be stronger and stronger in the future cities. I think that we need that very much, uh, as opposed to all these technocratic um, or strained ideas or, or money, uh, oriented ideas to sell gimmicks and, and gadgets. So I think that it's some basic uh, things and, and I really think that the most important things are not the really the projects which are made, but the, the mindsets which can be changed. And I've seen mindsets can be changed. People can gradually start to look at the world in a different way. And I think that that is exactly what I've seen in my hometown of Copenhagen, that everybody now from the, from the king, we haven't got a king, but something like that, down to the low, lowest um, student, lowliest student somewhere, they, they have another mindset. They think that planning for people is a way to do things, which I think is changing the mindset could be much more important than making projects. But first you change the mindset, and then the mindset will make the good projects. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> and now, eh, bueno, ahora esperamos algunas eh, preguntas de, de, la, de la sala. ¿Hay alguien que quiera romper el fuego? Tenemos, sí, ah, perfecto. Eduardo Leira. Sí. Ahora sí, ¿no? Sí, se te oye bien, sí. Me levanto. Decían que... Ahora. Bien. Eh, fantastic. Pues ahora, ¿no? Eh, eh, in English or working. in Spanish? In English. Eh, well, I'm not going to be less optimistic, optimistic as you are, I, with you. Uh, we are able to do things. We try to change some, the mentality. Uh, but we, our tools are more to make projects then if we do things that can force or help to change mentalities. Can you hear but for Mr. Lerner, I will... Es que no, no está funcionando bien el micrófono. Lo siento, no. A ver si se pudiera reparar. Ver, ¿Ahora? Ahora sí. Ahora, ahora sí. Mejor. Vale. Sí. Bien. Perdón. Sí. Uh, sorry. Well, Mr. Lerner, to start up, the first uh, mobility project in Curitiba. You start with a line, perfect, very few things we grew up. Then the next projects, then you show up and you say, take, if you want 
creativity takes zero. But when you grow up in the scale and you pr propose a, a project for Rio Metropolitan, then you need certain zeros more. You cannot take the zeros. You need more. How in the next steps to do larger project, projects, mm -hmm. more complex uh, projects, where you really integrate mobility with a public space, perhaps with certain activity, housing, more complex. That was a very f uh, mm -hmm. quick view of uh, the new project, but mm -hmm. they are more complex and you need more serious. Yes. And you know how to do it without serious. Is the gap in, in the scale in from, the, from the single project to the big scale, the metropolitan scale, you must change your method. Uh, it's connected with the question put on the table with, with Jungle. I, I always used to say that working in a city is not a question of scale or financial resources. The question is the decision making and to start a uh, change. So I used to say, if you want to make it happen, propose a scenario, mm -hmm. an idea, a project, that everyone or the la large majority will understand it is possible. If they understand it is possible, they will help you to make it happen. It's not always, it's not always, but it's one way how to achieve this point. <laughs> well, you want more questions? Must per ah, perdón, a jungle? Would you, yeah. would you add something? I, I would uh, say to this that when you did the first things in Curitiba, that was really a pioneering work. And it's difficult to be a pioneer. Also, when they started in Copenhagen to humanize mm -hmm. the city in the 62, mm -hmm. it was really dangerous and pioneering and, and there was need for visionary and, and some daring. Now I think that many things are different because mm -hmm. we have so many best practices, we have so many examples, and I think that a very important work in improving cities is to show what they've done in other mm -hmm. places mm -hmm. and make sure that all the people in the population are informed and say, would you rather live like this or have like this, the city? Then it's possible because it has been done. So I really believe in information and changing the mindset as we go along with the projects. But somebody has to be pioneers sometimes. And that's that, uh, necessary to be visionary and a firebrand and a strong character. We have one here. Thank you. More questions? Hola. Ah, sí, allí. Perfecto. Yes. Adelante. Um, I have a question. Um, you, you've talked about a lot of uh, great and amazing tools on how to humanize a, an existing city. But I was thinking, um, would you use, like, are these the tools you would use for, uh, for building new cities? Because we were also facing, like, the problems of building cities from, from scratch. And uh, and all the tools you you talked about, I think they they were more about like how to better our cities. But would you be using the same ones to design a new one, or would you rely on on other ones? Like for example, that Mazdar uh, city that Foster was um, uh, building in 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 in, the East, no, in Dubai, no, in yes, uh, in, in Qatar. Well, no, I don't remember, but. What are the tools that you think we should be using for new uh, developments? 
Yes, yes. Sometimes I'm asked, are these tools only for big cities like New York and Moscow? Mm -hmm. But I say that also a little village of 200 people, all the places where Homo sapiens have settled, these basic rules about planning or building for Homo sapiens uh, can be applied. I showed examples about improving existing cities, cleaning up after the automobiles and giving back the public spaces and the city to the people, people's use. This is quite simple because the cities were made for people and they were just invaded and now we can push back the invasion and clean up, simple. But there is a serious lack of using these same tools in new construction. I think that the, generally the architects, the planners, the, the developers, the people who put uh, investors, they are far too conservative and they make a lot of modernistic stuff still. And I really think that uh, that is a serious problem. In the, our office we were going to make a book about great new towns of the 21st century. And every day the book became more and more thin and in the end we only found six new towns or five new towns around the world made in the last 15 years which were worth talking about. This is a serious problem for our profession that we have the tools and they are used where it's easy to use them but they still have to be used in new construction for all the millions and billions of people who are to move into cities in our part of the world and more so in, in the, the developing part of the world. Well, we have a challenge there. <laughs> Perfect. there sometimes that uh, the new, we're facing new vocabulary. That means a city, smart cities, resilient cities, sustainable cities, or which are competitive cities, which are, they should be good cities. Another issue is having driverless cars, uh, any kind of, of its investment on new technologies or and performance, but never in the concept of the city. So, every time when I'm listening these new words, I used to say this is people, there are people, they want to sell you gadgets, new gadgets. Uh, and you feel, well, in that you are not able to understand these gadgets, then it's not possible working in that scale. I used to refuse strongly any kind of trying to sell new gadgets as the solution of the city. Well, yeah, well, uh, we must finish now. I summarize uh, this uh, the whole day, perhaps in two words. Uh, hoping and working for the best, <laughs> but uh, aware and really for the worst, climate change. And so, thank you very much uh, for both uh, masters. It uh, uh, was a real privilege to have you here. And now I give the the, uh, just, uh, the conclusions. I, I invite to uh, Pachi uh, Maite para que hagan un poco la conclusión final de esta magnífica jornada y de estas magníficas ponencias. No, bueno, yo no quería hacer exactamente una conclusión, pero bueno. Bueno, 
No, eh, dos cosas quería decir. Una que eh, tengo yo la sensación después de esta, de esta edición del uh, Congreso que realmente ha sido un acierto eh, no virar, pero al menos orientarnos en las cuestiones de la ciudad. Eh, según he oído estos días, o conforme iba oyendo estos días, tengo la sensación de que efectivamente el papel de los arquitectos en este momento, el papel más interesante en el que debemos aplicarnos de manera más convincente seguramente es en la cuestión de la ciudad. Eh, más que esta idea del arquitecto, y lo digo porque hay muchos estudiantes, eh, más como la arquitectura, digamos, como objeto. ¿no? Entre otras cosas porque eh, tengo la sensación de que tanto, por lo menos en Europa, o desde luego en España, eh, es donde más posibilidades hay de aportar, donde más posibilidades hay de generar ideas, donde más posibilidades de ilusión hay eh, en este momento. Por otra parte, hemos estado oyendo durante dos días, alternando entre unas posiciones más optimistas, unas posiciones más pesimistas, activas, digamos, como hemos visto esta mañana, pero en todo caso, eh, demostrando la intensidad y, y el campo tan extraordinario en el que nos encontramos en la ciudad, frente a una ciudad en demasía y muchas veces orientada o gobernada solo por unas fuerzas, como decíamos ayer, económicas, o de mercado sin mayores objetivos y, desde luego, no con los objetivos de lo público, del servicio, de lo común, de, lo, de la ciudad como lugar de integración, de sueños, de alegrías, eh, tampoco con un urbanismo dictado por la burocracia. Eh, yo creo que es tiempo otra vez de la planificación, de una planificación distinta, de una planificación que alterna entre la pequeña escala más cercana, en donde seguramente procesos más participativos son posibles y otro tipo de planificación más orientadora que da lugar precisamente a estas pequeñas. En todo caso, lo que se ha quedado claro es la urgencia de intervenir en la ciudad o la urgencia de buscar una ciudad más sostenible. Eh, los tiempos se acaban, eso es verdad, y eh, tampoco tenemos derecho de bebernos toda la copa nosotros. Hay que dejar algo para los demás y, y en la medida de lo posible que sea bueno. La segunda cosa que quería decir es que quería dar un agradecimiento muy especial a Maite Rodríguez. Maite, como sabéis, durante diez años en este trajinar de ir, venir, siempre resolviendo cuestiones difíciles para que los, el Congreso sea posible. Detrás de estos congresos siempre hay un trabajo arduo, molesto, pero que hace posible que todo simplemente parezca que ha funcionado bien. Eh, soy consciente de los muchos problemas que hay. Eh, Maite, como sabéis, se ha jubilado, para desgracia nuestros, se ha jubilado ahora, bueno, se había jubilado, pero nos ha hecho el favor, dada esa entrega que le es tan propia, de seguir durante este año hasta que acabara el Congreso. Por lo tanto, me parecía de justicia elemental desde aquí, naturalmente lo hemos hecho en la Fundación, pero hacerle un reconocimiento público, darle las gracias públicamente, porque ha sido el alma mater eh, en gran medida de estos congresos, sin, eh, sin eh, un grado muy importante de infraestructura y de logística, nada es posible, antes y durante el congreso. Así que muchísimas gracias, Maite, eh, quería hacerlo. Bueno, y se, seguirá con nosotros ahora desde la condición de patrona mucho más eh, inspiradora y más relajada. Muchísimas gracias. Bueno, pues nada más que decir que queda clausurado este congreso, que os doy las gracias a todos por haber estado aquí, seguramente la, muchos de vosotros repetidamente, la audiencia, nuestros amigos patrocinadores y patronos que, como hemos dicho ya muchas veces a lo largo de estos días, hacen posible el Congreso. Es verdad que es mucho trabajo, 
todo el mundo lo sabe, pero también es verdad que es un trabajo interesante, que te pone en contacto con personas generosas y, digamos, inteligentes, es decir, que para nada es una carga, sino todo lo contrario. Pero las etapas se acaban y entonces creo que es bueno, eh, digamos, retirarse a tiempo y esta es mi decisión. A partir de ahora, Covadonga me va a... Um, Viene detrás de mí, eh, haciendo, supongo que haciendo algo parecido. Por supuesto, son, no lo sé cómo será el futuro, pero sin duda la Fundación seguirá adelante y en este caso con su dirección y su, su propia manera de hacer las cosas. Una vez más, gracias a todos. Insistimos en, el, en invitaros al cóctel de despedida que también generosamente nos ofrece el Hotel Alma en los jardines estupendos y es que hace buen tiempo, que no lo sé, como alrededor de las ocho o así os esperamos a todos allí. Gracias y hasta pronto. Thank you.